Hey, hello there, boys and girls, girls and boys out there in TV land. Uh, this is, I believe, the fifth show of uh, Dog Tales, starring Millie the Wonder Dog, and here she is, Millie the Wonder Dog. Um, now, um, originally, we, uh, Millie and I would, would, would choose books from the local libraries around here, from the Howe Library and the Lebanon Public Library. But after a while, I got thinking that, gee, I could write books too. So um, <clears throat> I think three months ago, I tried writing a story about Millie, and it seemed to go OK. So I tried it again two months ago. And here we are today, and I've written another story. Um, these stories tend to be a little bit silly. And I hope you'll forgive me, and I hope you enjoy them. So we're going to start right away with today's story, which I'm calling, Millie is really listening. I love it the way this dog gets into children's literature. I mean, she really likes stories. Anyway, this story we call Little Arf and Nanny. Get it? Little Arf and Nanny. And uh, here we go. Now, although Millie, this is Millie, now leads a very happy life with her adoptive parents, Mother Mary, and myself, Captain Bob, she still thinks of herself as an orphan. Hers is a sad, sad tale. She sheds silent tears, even today, when she thinks about it. Can you imagine Millie crying about that? It's so strange. Anyway, here she tells her own story, translated from various yips, barks, and tail wags. I translated it with Millie's help. OK, here's Millie's writing. I was born in Madame Claudia's house. Madame Claudia was a woman who loved dogs. She was a breeder and ran a nice little kennel in her living room and in her backyard. She had a lot of young grandchildren. Some lived with her. Millie, stick around. This is a good story. Um, uh, uh, some lived with her, and some just dropped by from time to time to visit. All the children enjoyed playing with dogs, especially puppies. And we, the puppies, adored the children. I was the third youngest of a litter of 12. My mother, whose name was Nanny, was an elegant black Labrador retriever. I doted on her, meaning I loved her. She was warm, offered us the most delicious milk, and she had a heavenly scent that I still remember in my dreams. Oh, yes, my brothers, sisters, and I adored her with all our hearts. We slept a lot in those days, but every now and then, Millie, 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 stick around. I'm sorry. I think, I mean, she wrote this story, and she's a little, you know, she's heard it a lot, so she's not totally with it right now. She's got other things on her mind, but I think she'll get into it. Okay, um, and we the puppies adored. I was the third youngest. I doted on her. She was warm, offered us the most delicious milk, and she had a heavenly scent, a heavenly smell that I still remember in my dreams. Oh yes, my brothers, sisters, and I adored her with all of our hearts. We slept a lot in those days, but every now and then we would wake up, tussle with each other for a while, and then sidle over to Mom for a nourishing meal, all we could drink. It was a glorious life, a heavenly life. We loved our Mom, our Mom loved us, and we loved each other. What in the world could be better than that? Claudia told us that we had a father a big, tan, standard poodle. He was very handsome. He lived in a cage in the yard. Other dogs told me about him, too. 
I think I met him, but frankly, can't remember him at all. Suffice it to say that he was a great sire. Um, sire means father. He helped produce a lot of puppies. Things went along in this heavenly way for days and days, maybe even weeks. But all of a sudden, everything changed. Just out of the blue, we lost our paradise. Here is how it began. I remember sucking on my favorite teat, gulping down my usual helping of mom's warm, intoxicating milk, when from out of the blue, mom yelled, ouch! Mom, I said, mommy dear, what in the world is the matter? It's your miserable, sharp, stupid little teeth, little arf. That was my name then. You rotten squirt, she continued growling. If you're to get fed by me, go see a dentist first. Get those terrorist teeth of yours yanked out. I had no idea what she was talking about. In the first place, I didn't know what a dentist was. I didn't even know what teeth were. All I knew was that my dear loving mother was mad at me. As far as I could tell, there was no reason for it. I could not see what I had done wrong. I crawled away from her, whimpering sadly, and joined my brothers and sisters. They all told pretty much the same story. Has our saintly mother become evil? We asked each other. How shall we eat? We shall starve, we all cried at once. Just then, Madame Claudia entered our den. She carried a bunch of little glass bottles with her. Each had warm, human-type milk inside and a rubber nipple at the end. She gently picked us up one by one and allowed us to drink our fill. That made us feel better, but before falling asleep again, we all cried anyway because we missed our sweet-smelling mommy. Well, we did survive, all of us, but we had been badly shaken. In the next few days, Madame Claudia brought people visitors to our kennel. They peered at us, poked us, picked up one or two of us at a time, and said something to Madame Claudia that none of us understood. Soon my brothers and sisters began to disappear, one by one. We were puppies. Nobody was old enough to run away. Where could our litter mates have gone? What could have happened? Had they been eaten? Had they simply wandered off? Were they lost? Were they hungry? Those of us who remained were very, very worried, and nobody could find an answer to any of our questions. Then one day, and I remember it well, Mother Mary and Captain Bob appeared at Madame Claudia's house. I didn't know them, of course, but they seemed nice enough. Mary picked me up, placed me on her lap, and stroked my fur. I really liked that and decided right away that she was a very nice person. Captain Bob seemed okay, too, but he didn't do much except talk to Claudia. This is your new mom, Claudia explained, referring to Mary, and this is your new dad, she added, pointing to Captain Bob. I went to sleep soon after, uh, soon after that, feeling much better than I had in a while, but still I was a bit worried. What was to become of me? Well, you know the rest. Mother Mary and Captain Bob turned out to be decent adoptive parents, and I led a good life with them. All went very well with me. Well, very well, that is, until one day when something happened that made me very sad once again. Six months went by. I was by then a gorgeous, half-grown lady dog. Because Mary and Bob planned to go somewhere for a few days, a place that did not allow dogs, they decided to have me stay at Claudia's, where they thought I would be happy, uh, since that had been my puppyhood home. Imagine my delight and surprise when I caught sight of my dear sainted mother in the play yard. I trembled with excitement when Madame Claudia me up and brought me close to the gate, opened it, and tossed me inside. 
Mommy, I barked. Mommy, dearest, how wonderful to be with you again. She gave me a funny look. Who are you? She asked in an irritated tone of voice. It's me, I said, your favorite daughter. You must remember my name was Little Arth then. It's Millie now. I never saw you in my life, she mumbled, looking irritated. Go away, you're ugly. Tears came to my eyes. Remember, I took the ter third teeth from the right side uh, up from your tail, I mumbled sadly. You must remember, how could you have forgotten me? I wailed, tears streaming down the fur on my face. Oh my God, Mom howled in sudden terror. It's all come back, a nightmare. You're the one I called Snaggletooth behind your back. You chomped so hard on my teeth that I had to see the vet. Help, help, she barked, police. Get this nasty little menace out of here. At once, at once, I tell you, at once. Madame Claudia ran in seconds later, scooped me up, and placed me in a cage in the living room. That was the worst moment of my life. I cried and cried and eventually fell asleep dreaming terrible dreams. Mary and Bob returned the next morning and took me home. I was so happy to see them. I tried to tell them what had happened, but they did not seem interested. Besides, they're not very good at understanding dog talk, but they gave me my favorite dog chow soaked in chicken soup. I fell asleep this time to beautiful dreams. And that is my story. Well, I never saw my mother again, but from then on, I developed a passionate interest in helping all abandoned dogs and children no matter where in the world, no matter where they are in the world, to find a home where they are taken care of and loved as they deserve to be. It doesn't have to be with their natural parents. Foster parents or adoptive parents will do just as well, especially if chicken, if chicken soup is served warm, well-prepared, and smells very good. And that is the story that Millie wrote about her early life. I hope you didn't find it too upsetting. Uh, I could see that Millie was a little bit upset. She walked away because I guess I, we reminded her of some of the really sad moments of her life. But she seems okay now. And um, things are really okay with her life. I just wanted to mention a few things to you kids while we've got you on the uh, TV set. Um, as I mentioned last time, we're giving away these beautiful dog shirts. This is not Millie, this is another dog called Beanie the Singing Dog, who's a dog that belongs to a friend of mine. And um, if you want one of these shirts, you could get it simply by um, writing in to me um, and my, uh, by email, my email address is Mad Doggerel, M-A-D-D-O-G-G-E-R-E-L at iCloud.com. You'll see it up on the screen. And um, you got to do one of several things to get a shirt. Uh, the most fun thing to do probably would be to do a drawing of a dog. It could be your dog. It could be Millie. It could be a make-believe dog, or it doesn't even have to be a dog that you draw. You might want to take a picture of a dog and send it to us. Do it by email. Your parents, if you don't know how, they'll show you how to do it on your computer. You can do that, or you can simply write in and um, give us suggestions for the show. Or um, <clears throat> you can say in an email, I would love to come to the studio and help you with the show and we could put you on the show either with Millie or with your own dog. So if you just contact us you can get a, um, a free dog t-shirt. And that's the end of the Dog Tales show for today. Hopefully in a month from now we'll have another story. Millie will come again and maybe she could write another story. I'm not sure. We're not, we haven't really planned it yet but it should be a good one. 
thank you for watching our dog tale show with Millie and Captain Bob, and hopefully we'll see you next time. Goodbye, kids. <laughs>